My nail tech knows how to keep it a little secret I don't wish for my success, I speak it I caught a buzz and you did too, but you tweaking I look like I've been getting money, how reek it? You smell me, that's LV Walk around with my chest out and my skin smooth, I'm healthy I'm in a mix and I'm handshaking, but most of y'all can't help me Most of y'all ain't wealthy Most of y'all just dress like it I caught the vibe that y'all giving off And I'm trying to make myself less like it This chick got a little Porsche body I might let the bro test drive it It's hard for me to get excited I love music and stress about it My city haunting, I'm co-signing this wave Coming up next, it. I've been putting out a ton of content recently and there is a good reason for that. This year, the format for my business is changing entirely and I'm gonna make this really, really quick. Instead of doing drops here or there whenever, I'm gonna do drops once a month where the store is open for one week and you have that week to order those specific products and we're never making those designs again. Changing everything up so I can get back to my passion, which is making more media content and being able to provide this content for you guys. But none of this is possible without this brand. And so if you guys enjoy these videos, the very least you could do is share them with your friends, give them a like, comment, whatever. But if you are able to and you love the designs that we put out, you love the brand, you love the quality of the products, go buy some of this stuff. I'm gonna run you through this drop, which drops on Monday, the 28th of February, and the store will be open with these products until March 7th. Then it will close and you won't be able to get them again. But I'm gonna run you through this whole drop right now and show you all the products. For the first time ever, we are dropping pants. These are gray sweatpants. People have been asking me to do these for a long, long time, and I'm super pumped to finally be dropping these. It has the LAP Snake logo on them in black. These are super soft, super comfortable. If you are somebody like myself who has pretty short legs, these are actually gonna be in your favor. I am 5'8", and I personally wear a small or a medium in these. It varies, but that's because I have really short legs. If you have really, really long legs, it may be a little bit difficult. But yeah, for most normal people, just wear the size that you would usually get. But super stoked on these. Already teased these a little bit, but these are the static shirts. Um, Basically, since I am now static on the car, I wanted to do kind of a cool over shirt. This is a really, really dope design. Super cool, really dope colors. Um, you know I'm a huge fan of any kind of like skull designs and this is more traditional to the stuff that I've done in the past. So if you like these, 100% a cop. These usually have a custom LEP tag in them. So if you love the shirts, grab one of these. Next up, this is by far my favorite product from this drop. This is the Substance Crew Neck. If you guys aren't familiar with my podcast, Substance Show, it's really, really dope. And this logo is so rad. Um, I'm super excited to do more branding stuff with this in the near future. But these crew necks are super, super heavy. If any of you guys have bought my Gatlinburg hoodies before, the pink ones, they're the same exact material. So they're really thick, really heavy. This is a kind of a green, forest green color. Super stoked on these. I hope that you guys like them if you're a fan of crew necks. And last up, we got a heather gray hoodie to match the sweatpants. Now they're not an exact match. If you wanna wear a full gray sweatsuit, by all means, but these hoodies are super dope. Again, black snake logo across the front. Black Snake logo vertical down the back. Really pumped on these. Again, like everything that I make, it is super soft, super comfortable. They continue to feel like this after you wash them a hundred fucking times. So if you guys love good products, you love my videos, and you wanna see me continue to make them and also get more and more back into the media side of things, please go support this drop. It's Monday to Monday, February 28th to March 7th. That is the only time you'll be able to get these products. Once they are sold, they are sold. So if you love these, do not miss out. Let's get into the video. Yo, what's going on everybody? Welcome to today's video. I have been trying to mess with this car for the past couple of weeks. A couple of weeks ago, actually, I started going to the gym, um, trying to get myself in better shape, and I made a huge mistake I injured myself quite badly. That sucked and I needed to recover from that for a week because I physically could not move my arms. Once I got done recovering with that, I tried to work on this thing some more and this week I unfortunately have had the flu and so I have not left my bed other than to throw up or shit myself. So yeah, it's not been going too well, but I've tried to film all the little things that I've been doing as I've been doing them. Granted, they're not very good, so that's why I'm just making this video, which will be a lot more exciting, and I'll just explain all the things that I've done. 
I had engine and trans spacers come in from Dayton 1. Show you just how easy these go in here. I have it resting right there, but there is only one way they can go in. There you go. There they are. What we're gonna do now is lower it back down, tighten it up, and we're good. I've installed those. Really, really simple install. That should help a ton, and it's actually allowed the bottom part of the exhaust that was scraping to get out of the way, so that's fixed that issue. This thing should not be scraping all of the time now. Now, the other thing that I've done is actually match the rear camber to the front, so we're at negative 14 degrees squared now. All I did was basically adjust the lower arms to push the bottom out a little bit further so that it can match up to the front. I'm going to get into this more a little bit in a second because I am going to be adjusting this some more today, but I do need to explain why this, as much as it looks sick, is not going to work. And then the one final thing is a little bit of maintenance. Replace the thermostat in this thing, change the oil. A couple of odds and ends to make sure that it's running right. It was having somewhat of an overheating issue before. Fan for the radiator was turning on and it only overheated when I actually drove it. Uh, otherwise it stayed at the exact same temperature. And so I'm assuming that it was the thermostat, or at least I'm hoping that it is. Um, so we'll see once I actually, you know, pull it out, drive it up and down the street, make sure that it isn't overheating. Also, you guys will notice that I have these lights in here. These are actually the new studio lights for the podcast, of which I've missed two weeks now. Or technically it's been three weeks because the last episode we recorded, I wasn't on there because we had a guest of Matt. But good news, this coming Monday, New episode, I guess we're saying we're coming back for season two. New lighting, so it's gonna look a lot nicer. And we have a third microphone, which means, which means we can finally have guests on with myself and Matt. And we're very, very excited for this step. Anyways, today I am going to be making some adjustments to this that I didn't think I was gonna do, but I'm gonna do it anyway. So this thing has negative roll center adjusters in the front, which is basically this big aluminum block that pushes the offset out and gives you a ton more camber. It obviously also changes the offset pretty aggressively because it pushes the wheel out so much further. I don't wanna to get too in depth about, you know, what things you need to do what to get camber on this car, blah de blah. Um, I'm actually going to make a separate video pretty soon going over absolutely everything that you need to do to these cars to get camber and, and adjust different things, blah blah blah. The negative roll centers is the only thing that stops me from getting less camber right now. Right now the only adjustment that I have from what you see here is by pulling the top in. And that I can only add camber. If I push it out, I will obviously hit the fender more and I can't do that. And I've kind of come to the conclusion that I don't want to run this much camera if I don't absolutely have to. My goal from the start when I, you know, started this process was that I wanted to be at negative 12 squared. And so if I can get to that or maybe even less, that would be amazing. But it really just depends on how much adjustment I have from the top and bottom, both in the front and the rear, and also how much the width and offsets of these wheels will allow me to adjust. And this is where it's really key to have as much adjustment as possible in control arms so that you can work around different stuff like this because you never want to run into the issue where you spend a ton of money on having wheels built and all of this stuff doing custom bodywork to fit a certain size wheel and then you don't have any flexibility because you either cut and welded stuff so it's set in place or you're just restricted by certain things such as the NRCA which pushes everything out. Today I think what I'm going to do is take the NRCA off run this completely without that, it's not even going to have a roll center adjustment, um, see where it sits in terms of camber, and then see if I can get the rear to match that. If I can't, I have to figure something else out because I know that the rear, I think the minimum amount of camber I can run is like negative 12 degrees. And so if I can get the rear to the minimum and then get this to 12 degrees and the fitment not be absolutely horrible, we should be in really good shape. All right, this is, uh, this is what the NRCA looks like. It's literally just a block, like I said. Basically, the bolts from factory go through the bottom right there, and then 
the knuckle goes on top right here, pushes everything outboard, gives you more camber. Um, and the fact that it is offset this way a little bit actually corrects the caster of correcting the roll center. If you do a regular roll center adapter and it's like this thick, if it doesn't have that offset correction, your caster will be way, way the fuck off. And so this helps with that too. But yeah, by removing this, it now means that my roll center is off, which sucks, but hopefully it will allow the camber to get better into, uh, into spec and we'll, we'll see what happens. All right, as you can see, it sits up higher, obviously, um, because I just took the roll center adjuster out of it, which spaced the car, you know, suspension upwards so the, the body of the car would sit lower. It's less camber. The fitment is roughly about the same at the top. If we now take a look at the camber, if we compare it to the rear, obviously the rear has a lot more camber right now, but I would say that's probably two degrees. In this position, it's really coming down to, do I want to do this? Sacrifice, you know, bushings, maybe the ride a little bit, or do I want to go the other route with more camber where I run the risk of cracking barrels more often or possibly debeading, making it harder to drive? Do I want the roll center adjuster or do I want less camber, more practicality, but more wear and tear? And realistically too, whenever I drop the coilover down, this is going to camber in more because it doesn't have that roll center adjuster pushing it out and stopping it from getting natural camber. It may even require a fucking spacer after this, which is not what I wanted. I don't ever really want to run a spacer after, you know, having custom wheels made for the car, but um, adjustability is everything. The other pros and cons of more camber versus less camber is having more camber ideally should allow you to turn a little bit easier because when you have more camber and you turn the wheel, it actually pulls the tire away from the top of the fender. Um, and so yeah, more camber means slightly higher, less camber is slightly lower, more camber means better turning, less camber means less turning or more rubbing at turning. The sound of my sway bar end links. It is a little bit higher than I would want it to be. Um, I'm hoping that it's still going to settle a little bit. There you go. That caused it to settle some. All right, as you can see, the fitment is obviously quite a bit weaker, which is not what I'm going for. I'm going to mess with that some more and, you know, maybe we'll add you know, 10 mil spacer or whatever, just to fill that back out a little bit. All right, yeah, if we look at the camber, you see it's just slightly less than the rear. So if I pull that rear out back to where it was, hopefully it'll then be matching again. When I added the camber at the bottom, I didn't realize that it was gonna tuck so much harder than it was. And so I actually cannot get the wheel off anymore. Uh, this is it at full droop and it's pretty damn tight and I literally cannot get this wheel off unless I decided to unbolt something, change the alignment or whatever. There's no way I can get this wheel off. Granted having, you know, helper springs would definitely help out with that because it adds the droop, but uh, I did not have that option when I ordered the coilovers. And so it is what it is because I'm now matching the front, which has less camber. I can pull it back out to basically where it was and go from there. Now that it's adjusted, dropped it down, and honestly, that is exactly where I wanted it. It's pretty much fender the lip. It's not tucking like crazy anymore. Like I said, pretty much fender the lip. It's level with it. Um, that actually looks really good. It's not anything too, too crazy, but it's very usable. Um, and compared to the front, it's definitely better in the rear right now. So I definitely think the front's gonna need a spacer, but uh, we also need to find out whether I can turn at that height and find a good balance between. But this, I'm pretty, uh, pretty confident that's gonna be good. It's a pretty fucking solid match now, I would say. Yeah, it, it, is, it is pretty much spot on, so I'm stoked on that. Weirdly enough, this side seems to sit lower. I know the toe is all kinds of messed up on this side, but that's tucking a lot more. That's super weird. So 
Might need to make some adjustments to the coilover, which is not what I want to do because I'm super sick of adjusting coilovers now, but uh, probably something that needs to happen. But as long as I can get this wheel off, I'm good. Um, which, with it talking like that, I don't really know if I can right now. Now you're also all probably curious how high is the car now. Mock this up where it's supposed to be. You can get about two fingers under there, um, which honestly I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. That makes it slightly more usable than it was, and it should, and it should still look really, really good and really low. Um, I'm not too worried about that looking like it's too high. So before I ended off the video, I wanted to try and see if I could get the driver's side sitting at the same height because I didn't want to just leave it like tomorrow. I kind of want to get in the car, try and drive it. So I'm trying to get everything as straight as I can and in order. I just spent the better part of two hours, two hours pulling this wheel on and off, adjusting the coilovers, adjusting the toe ever so slightly every single time and somehow it's still not where it needs to be. And I've just exerted, sorry, I'm gonna have to put this camera down. I have just exerted so much strength that I literally feel like I wanna fucking throw up now. And, and it really, that was for like nothing because it's still not where I need it to be. <laughs> Granted, it's better than it was, but the toe is absolutely fucked still. And I've adjusted it a million times and I didn't wanna take the wheel back off again. And so I've been trying for the past 45 minutes to adjust it with the wheel on there and my shoulders feel like they're blown out now. So yeah, that fucking sucks. Um, it's better than it was. It's still lower than the other side. Now that I wanna go throw up, I'm gonna end off this video. The next video that I'm gonna upload on the car will be me driving it, hopefully. As far as I know, everything is somewhat decent now. The wheel bearing issue that I was having on the passenger side when I pulled the knuckle off, I could feel that it had play, so I took the dust cap out at the back, loosened that nut off, and then tightened it back down as tight as I could. And it doesn't seem to have any play in it now, so I'm hoping that that was just the issue, that it was just a little bit loose from where I rebuilt the uh, wheel bearings. I'm gonna leave the front fitment as it is right now, which obviously I do wanna improve it, but right now it's not rubbing on anything, which is a great start because it means I can take the car out drive it, beat the shit out of it, make sure that everything's good, and then start dialing it in and getting better fitment. Um, it's probably wise for me to slowly work my way out to having really good fitment, as instead of having really, really good fitment, rubbing, hitting things, then dialing it back. Because then the damage is already done. So yeah, I'm gonna take it real, real easy, be careful with it, and make sure that I'm not gonna fuck anything up in the front. But uh, yeah, everything looks pretty solid right now, and it should be a much more usable height now so big stoked and we will see you in another video real real soon and if you want to go grab anything that is live on the site right now um, we still have a bunch of shirts in inventory please go grab those as well as like the mystery box uh, I think there's only a couple of the mystery boxes left that may be sold out by the time you see this video um, go grab some of that inventory I need to move some of that because it does help free up some of the expenditure for other stuff um, but yeah, that's about it, and I have some really exciting new updates coming soon that actually don't even involve this car. I'm actually going out in Florida next week to pick up another car, so stay tuned for that. But yeah, thanks guys, I'm going to go throw up and pass out. <laughs>